Hi there, and uh, let's get to it. Keyframing, in its simplest terms, is an automated form of motion graphic animation. We're going to be keyframing a lot in the color page, but we're going to start looking at keyframing in the edit page as most of the values that you find in the inspector are capable of being animated. Let's look at some very basic animation. I'm going to select a clip in the timeline, click on the inspector, and any value that's got this little rhombus next to it indicates something that is capable of being keyframed. So we know that we can change the position value of the clip. I could decide to have the clip start off screen. So I'm just clicking and dragging the value all the way off the viewfinder. I'm then going to click the keyframe to indicate that this is the starting point and it's going to be at this value. The way to enact an animation is to move down in time because that's what animation is. It's change over time and then go into my position values and maybe move it off screen. And this highlighted keyframe indicates that there has now been another keyframe dropped in this area. Now I can't see these keyframes inside of the inspector interface, but if you look down here at the clip in the bottom right corner, I have a symbol indicating that I now have keyframed areas. And if I was to double click this, I can reveal that there are the two keyframes at these two different positions. If I start to move my playhead back, I'll reveal that my clip has been moving across the screen during this period. That's actually a very simple explanation as to why this happens automatically. The software knows the beginning and the end and the amount of frames in between the two positions. So it divides the difference and calculates how many pixels it needs to move the clip by every frame in order to achieve this smooth transition. So what if I wanted to very gently push in on her face as she's reacting to the conversation? I'm going to click on the reset arrow next to the position value to get the clip back to its original place. So again, I choose my starting point. I click on the keyframe for the zoom. I go down in time and let's say this reaction is where I want to zoom in on. And in fact, I probably want to change my position as well because right now it's zooming in on the anchor point, which is in the center of the footage. So I'm going to use this little arrow next to the keyframe to jump to the first keyframe. So you see, this is how you navigate between them. Uh, and I'm going to drop another keyframe for the position, and that way I know they're going to be aligned, and the animation will start at the same time for both values. And now I can reposition her so that she falls on the thirds lines. And when I play this back, it will go in like that. It doesn't look fantastic. It looks very... Um, 80s soap opera, but that's beside the point. What I really want to demonstrate is the fact that I can now double click the keyframes icon in the bottom right corner, and I still only see two keyframes, but I know that I made changes to both the zoom and position values. The reason it's only showing these two is because it's representing all of the transform controls, and we know that transform is an entire category. So I could actually manipulate these keyframes. I could grab one and move it aside here, which will slow down this effect. What if I want to go after the scale or the position properties specifically? Uh, what if I want them to start and end at different times? For that, I'm going to have to click on this triangle next to the transform controls and reveal all the internal keyframes that are changing over time. So you can see that position can now be animated separately. And in this case, the zoom is going to finish, whereas the position is going to keep changing. It's possible to add as many keyframes as you need. So if I wanted to zoom out of this at the end, for example, and bring my position back to the way it was. Uh, you could see in the timeline, there's been keyframes automatically generated at the position of my playhead. You can also delete keyframes by jumping to them using the navigation arrows on either side, and then clicking on the orange rhombus to indicate that you don't want a keyframe in that area. And you can see the timeline's now reflected that removal. Thank you for watching, and until next time.